Now, we've talked about Wayne Buzz Busek on this channel before. From Visalia, California, we've talked about his signature pattern, the Western Coachman, which he created in 1934, but also his Kings River Caddis that he came up with sometime probably in the 1950s. But the pattern I'm going to tie for you today is actually the precursor to his Western Coachman. It's called the Old Gray Mare. Now, there's not much history to be found on this pattern. I did see one reference out there that did say it was a Busek pattern, but in Mike Vala's Founding Flies, he mentions that someone showed Busek this Old Gray Mare, and he used it for inspiration on his Western Coachman. But either way, we do know that he tied it and sold it in his shop as far back as the 1940s. Now, it is a cool looking pattern, and like the Western Coachman, it's tied as a wet fly, but with the deer hair wing, it's not going to be a fast sinker. In fact, it's probably what we'd call today a semi dry fly, meaning that after a couple of casts, this thing, it'll probably float for a couple of seconds, but then it's going to slowly start to sink. And one advantage worth noting on a fly like this is that you can fish it as a dry fly and a wet fly on the same cast. And even as a wet fly with this white deer hair wing, it's still going to be pretty visible visible for a good part of your drift. Now, this is not a difficult pattern, but it really is a pretty cool looking one. and certainly a fun one to tie. So there it is in the vise, an old gray mare. Now, I'm not sure why it's called a gray mare. That green is certainly a prominent part of the fly, but it's a very interesting looking pattern. Now, I'm tying this on a size eight, one extra long, one extra strong, barbless wet fly hook. This thing is a wet fly. Even though with that deer hair wing, it is going to have some amount of buoyancy to it. So I'm going to use brown thread. It's a 70 denier. I'll take a base right back here where I'm going to catch in the tail. In the tail, just a few fibers from red strung saddle hackle. And according to the couple of pictures I've seen, it is pretty long. So let's try that right there, keep it on top. Is that gonna be enough? Yep, I think it's gonna be enough right there. We'll go ahead and bury this, leave our thread back here for the next component, which is the green chenille. And I'm gonna pull just a little bit off, leaving this bare thread core right here. So we'll catch this in right back here to where we're gonna start wrapping it. and just bury those nubs, but keep your thread toward the back right here. We're only gonna use about two wraps of this green. I need to back this up just a little bit so I catch this off. Now snip this, it's gonna leave a little bit of fuzz, but we'll blow that away or pull it off in just a second. Now, I could spend a few thread wraps just trying to flatten that down, but I want to be careful and not build up too much bulk. I'm already going to have a little bit of a lump right there, so I'm going to go ahead, catch this in, this red floss here, toward the front. That didn't get it. Here we go. Got a couple of nicks and calluses on my fingers there, but we'll get through it. Okay, so that's caught in, and I'm going to just a few wraps going back. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to wrap it up and then back and up again. And that will give me pretty much three layers of this floss. Okay, when you're satisfied that you've got enough coverage, go ahead and catch this off. We'll take a look at this. It's a little bit lumpy back there, but not a lot you can do about that. And several of the ones I've seen pictures of, they were kind of lumpy anyway. So let's go ahead and secure this in. And now we're gonna put a little bit of a brown soft hackle on. Just a small hen feather right here. I'm gonna catch it in from the, the small side, create a little notch in the, the front up here. And I'm only gonna put probably two wraps. Some of them I've seen didn't even have a, a front hackle. 
but the, most of the recipes did call for it and several of them I saw did. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it. I think it looks a little bit better with it. I should probably grab my hackle pliers here, but I'm gonna live on the edge and then just try to do it with my fingers since I'm really not putting a whole lot down anyway. Okay, so that's two wraps right there. Let's catch this off. And now just lick your fingers, pull everything back, and create a little swept back hackle right here. And the next component, just some white deer body hair. This is actually belly hair right here. Not bucktail, just some kind of body hair. And I am putting this in my stacker. We'll see how well this stacked. Looks like it's gonna be fine. So measure it to about the bend of the hook, maybe a little bit into the tail. And I'm gonna spin this thread clockwise, kind of cord it up so I can get a pretty tight bite on this right here. And this is probably too much. So I'm gonna grab the tips and just pull maybe a, a third or fourth of it out here. There we go. I think that's gonna be about the right amount right there. And this is gonna flare up on you. And I think that's perfectly fine. Several of them I saw, you know, did have it pretty much flared up. Just be careful you don't mix the, the butt ends up front with the, um, you know, the, the tips. So just, if you can keep them separate, you can snip this front up here before you've let go of this back. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally clipping some of the back ones. Okay, I think that is gonna be fine right there. Now what I have seen before we go any farther, um, sometimes if you have it going around the sides, you can probably just, you know, reach in here and snip some of these off the sides. In this case, I'm happy enough with it. I don't think any are going around the side, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish this head. Just several wraps so I can bury all this white right here. Okay, I think that's fine. I'm gonna whip finish it right back here at the back of the head. Now take a look, see if we have any cleanup. Uh, I'm fine with this. I think drop a head cement and we got a fishable fly. What you might wanna do, you see that? Some of these white ones right here are coming off a little bit on the side. You can go in there and, and trim a few of those if you wanted to. The one I saw in Buzz's catalog there it had looked like it had been trimmed like that. But in this case, I think we're fine. So I'm gonna leave it as is and call this a fishable fly. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.